Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today, we're going to do a channeling with someone who has been requested and with someone who I have been feeling into the last week or so. All right, so we are going to chat with Luke Perry in the afterlife. Now, Luke Perry is most known recently for his role in Riverdale. I, my understanding, I didn't watch the show, but my understanding is that he was a dad in that, that show. But I know him. I know him from back in the day in Beverly Hills, 90210. And he was Dylan, okay? He was like the kind of bad guy strong silent type he totally has a james dean vibe to me which is totally perfect you guys because i just channeled james dean like two weeks ago so he kind of has that vibe and he definitely is someone whose death was a shock he he passed away from a stroke and you know if you've watched above life channel that as a psychic and medium i kind of have a rule a rule of engagement or connection where I don't like to channel people right away after they died. Now that's a Bridget thing. That's just a preference I've had because I felt like it wasn't very polite to do that. I kind of felt like it was just not, it just didn't feel, I felt like I needed to give them privacy and respect like the family and stuff. But I realized that after a session I had the other day that that's just a thing that I, that's just a Bridget thing. That's just a, something that I created for myself to have kind of a boundary around the energy of that person's passing and not just that person's passing because, you know, I feel like death is a private or intimate moment, you know, between the creator and the spirit and the unification of that and the transition of that is really is sacred and it's 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 as sacred as birth is and kind of to dig all into that and be all in the business of people spirit feels like not super great to me uh, right away you know i feel like oh geez let's let's kind of give it some time however i also recognize that part of the reason why i have tried to stay away from the sensationalization or the the focus on people who just die right away, who have just recently passed or what have you, is because I don't want the attention. Like I don't want people Google searching and finding me and my channeling about that person because I feel almost like it can be like a drug, you know, afterlife and, and paranormal connection can be like a drug to some people and it can distract them. It can be an addiction. It can be something that redirects you instead of focusing on your own life and your own beautiful spirit and the incredible eternal energy that you have access to that we all have access to i feel like it distracts people and i don't want to be a part of that however don't worry i'm going to get to luke perry if you hate that about me and my channel don't watch okay <laughs> all right so for those of you who know how it's done here at above life channel you know that I got some story to share you for, with you first, right? So a couple of days ago, I was blessed to talk to a client that I talked to one other time before who comes to me from the East Coast of the United States. And we connected because of Above Life Channel, because of the channeling here. And she is such a beautiful soul. I love you so much. You know who you are, I hope. <laughs> And she scheduled a session with me and it takes some time, some, you guys, sometimes. It takes like three to four weeks to get in with me sometimes. And so she scheduled a session with me like a month ago. And we just had it this last week. And when she scheduled the session, her mom was not sick. When we had the session, between the time that she scheduled the session and we had the session was about a month, right? Four weeks. And during that time, her mom got sick and then she died. So when I talked to her, her mom had transitioned into the afterlife only about six days before that. She didn't know. Mom wasn't sick before she scheduled the session. And here I was, all of a sudden, like I go to open up the session and to create the energy connection and we start to talk and all of a sudden, boom, her mom's like right here. And I'm like, wow. 
your mother is so easy to connect to. I said, is your mother in the afterlife? And she said, yes. And she got emotional a bit. Natural to be emotional. You don't need to apologize for that. It's beautiful. It's, it's just a reflection of how much you love and care for that and that person, that spirit. And I could feel her. I could see her. I could, she was so easy, so easy to talk to. And then I finally asked her, I said, well, when did she die? Because I don't remember. I'd only talked to this beautiful, sweet client one other time before. And I don't remember if she, had, if her mom was in the afterlife that time. You guys, I talked to so many people, so many families, so many dead people, so many living people. I can't remember all that stuff. Oh, please. I can't remember. I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. And so it was just such a, it was so easy to do. And I thought, you know, Maybe I need to loosen up a little bit on my rule about communicating with spirit how long I talk to them, how long I talk to them after they die. Now, I do think that there are still some rules of engagement that I need to make sure that I'm honoring. Like, I'm not going to jump on any bandwagons because I just don't like that. Like, I feel like, oh, gosh, it just it doesn't seem like me. I'm not a follower like that. But I also think that there's some... If there's some relevance and some insight that can be gained, some healing, some opportunity for you to open up your spirit for your own inner healing or connection work, because someone had just recently died and for some reason that could be a portal or opening for you to heal for yourself or to inspire you to go out and utilize your intuition or to make changes in your life or co-create your life in a way that's more positive and supportive and healthy, then yes. Yes, thank you, Luke Perry, for your patience and waiting for your time to be on scene here. But yes, maybe I will consider that in the future. I'm open-minded and open-hearted to consider that in the future. But I won't do things that are like, um, let's solve some murders or let's talk about this person and gossip about them. That's not the intent of Above Life Channel. If you want that kind of channeling, please go someplace else. That's not, there's a purpose for, he, for the channeling of celebrities in the afterlife here that may blow your mind, but it's all about you and inspiring you to live your best life. And that's how I work with them. I'm like the life coach to former people in the afterlife that understand the pressures of living in a very human life on stage. And oftentimes we as people feel like we're living our lives on the stage too, open to criticism, judgment, external and internal. And we're always trying to prevent ourselves from being a target or being bullied or being mistreated or misunderstood. So a lot of times we hide or we tone down ourselves and that is not the point. The point of life is to live it and to allow other people to live their own lives. And if they're projecting their evaluation or criticism or judgment or meanness, if they're being mean to you, it's because they feel bad for themselves. We have to start recognizing that. So now Luke, Mr. Luke Perry, you are, he is gorgeous, let me just say. He is a beautiful man in human form and in the afterlife, his energy is glowing and he really does have a nice smile. He's got this beautifully shaped face and he's kind of got this eyebrow thing and he like is glowing like in a lovely way you are a beautiful inspiration he says i'm glad that i could help you he says <laughs> he says if i if i inspire you then you can inspire others and he says isn't that really what it's all about he says you know the impact you can make on this world is is part of your legacy it's part of what legitimizes your life as a celebrity Okay, so as a celebrity, Mr. Luke Perry, I have to ask you. So as a celebrity, you are well known for lots of different types of work. Like I said, 902 and 0, that's how I know you. And most recently, many people will be fans of you in Riverdale. How as an afterlife, so as a spirit, can you explain to us what, what your body of work means to you now? What your life roles and accomplishments from your work, what does that mean to you now as an afterlife spirit? What does it mean in the afterlife to have all these accomplishments? A and what is important to you? Okay. Oh, wow, he is. I'm going to use the word sexy. Even in the afterlife, he is. He kind of has a way, you guys, about him. He says...
He says, I, I was fortunate and I recognized that when opportunities present themselves, you've got to take it. You, you know, you have to take risks. There are some, some things that you will choose to do, some projects, or in my case, some, some projects or some roles that, you know, just aren't that fulfilling, but they can lead to other things. So, okay. So the advice that he's kind of giving this advice, he says advice I would give about living your life is to recognize that there are stepping stones. It's, it's more like a staircase. And each step that you take, it's you closer to this, this sense of accomplishment. That's really what humanity is about. Being a person, having a human life is, is this series of a, a steps toward accomplishments of goals that, that we set uh, for ourselves in, in our human ex in our human time he's saying it's hard to identify each of the words in our human time our human existence it's important to recognize that although you may have this big this grand idea in your mind this vision for what what you want you know that that perfect role that perfect career that perfect life it's important to know that it takes a lot of small steps to get close to that to even get close to that it's a lot of small steps and you have to build upon your body of work you have to build upon your accomplishments you have to build upon the skills that are needed in order to be in the right place at the right time isn't so much about like timing as it is about you being willing to go into an experience and make the most of it no matter what it is there's it's not small it's relevant you've got to make it relevant if you have a small part a small role he says you know even if you're doing commercials or, or acting, or if you're an intern and working in a mail room, he says, the person that works in the mail room can run the company. It's not, he said, it's not, it's not out of reach. It's not out of what's possible. He says, you talk about, you've talked about the topic of manifesting, and I'd like to speak on that a little. I think uh, the, the topic is misunderstood, and there's this, mind mind's view that it's all about what's big and what's noticed what's recognized that that the recognition is the goal but that's not the goal that's not at all what you're really seeking and in your words it would be connection he says he points to me and says in your word it'd be connection you seek connection you're looking for something to plug into that fills your soul that fills you up with so much sense of pride and and you just beam out you you sh you ooze out your talent you you get to share that and express that and you get to be challenged and those are the opportunities that make you they really make you who you are and that is how you do get recognition or acknowledgement or invitation or that's how you get parts in movies or roles or opportunities and projects now um have you done directing or producing because i'm feeling like that like i literally see you in a chair and it says director on the back it's a black chair and like old school movies and it says director and i feel like luke perry have you been a director he says yes i've had the opportunity to direct and he's showing me like an indie film and he shows me something for TV, a made for TV something. He says, you know, television has changed a great deal. He said, the way that you consume media has changed so much that entertainment has had to adjust. And it's given a tremendous amount of opportunity to reach people, to make connections in different ways. And it's given a great, a great number of platforms, you know, social media, for example. YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, for example, to, to provide lots of, of 
people with the opportunity to share their creativity, to make some really incredible work and to share it. And it's not, it's not as limiting as it used to be, as it once was. And I think in the future, there's going to even be even more innovation. And with the on-demand services that are available now, there's, there's so much more, but I, but I do feel that in the future, there will be a sort of a nostalgia about the old TV time, the early days of television, where, you know, the 1980s sitcoms and the rise of the coming into your house every week. And instead of a, a binge, kind of a consumption, overeating, over consuming media, there will be, uh, I feel, he says, I feel that there'll be a return to a uh, sort of a routine or a scheduling of almost like an event like uh, television, but not television in the forms of there's primary channels and that's the only people that have control and that kind of a thing, but, but a, a way that entertainment can be something that's a routine part of life that provides a uh, uh, routine is the best way I think he's saying a consistent um, outlet because when when you watch something when, whether it's a movie or a television show or or a series you are consumed you you become part of the the production the the dream or the vision of the producers, the creators, the writers, the actors, you become part of that. You become invested in that and accepted into that. And so every, every week then there's this feeling of needing to show up and to in a way reconnect with that. You have a buy-in, you have a, an interest in how things are gonna go and you ride the emotions of that series or that cast in a way that allows you to, in a way, detox your own, your own life, detox yourself. It's not just, he says, he says this is interesting because he knows how I feel about this. Because you can feel that, right? <laughs> he says, it's not just escapism, it's not just a distraction. For some, yes, it might start off that way, but it's it's not. You become part. He says, look at the Game of Thrones. Look at the incredible success of that. And I didn't watch that. <laughs> he says, but many, many of your viewers have. He says, and look at the incredible success of that. There's this, you become part, it's a camaraderie. You become part of it. And that's that's what's exciting to to the people who are creating it. That's what they want. They want you to be part of it to become one to have a place where you belong and you're connected mm. so you see it's so much more entertainment and acting and producing and creating is not just fame and beautiful people and notoriety and awards it's it's not it's it can be so much more than that and I think in the era of reality television, you lose sight of that. In the area of uh, in the era of vlogging, like like vlogging, he's pointing to me because I just did a blog this morning on my other channel, um, where I blog a lot of stuff. And he says, in the era of that, there's this, there's there's more. He says there's so much more commitment and relationship that can be achieved when when you recognize the, the, the part that you play in anything that you watch or you consume or you become part of. He says the audience is, is critical in the success of anything. It's not just about watching it, it's about the, the commitment that they have. He said, it's, it's incredible. He says at Riverdale, we had a lot. He says, you know, it was, it's hard to compare, he says, with 90210, as you mentioned. He says, it's hard to compare that with Riverdale and success-wise. It's hard to compare he says, but in my experiences, it's in Riverdale, there's a, a, new, a new opportunity for me to connect in a different way. And playing a father, while it seems a bit mind blowing, if you think of me, you know, as Dylan in 90210, it seems kind of mind blowing to imagine me as a dad in a different 
you know, way. He says, but there's, we all go through stages in our lives and we all grow and we experience different things and we have different roles that we take on and different challenges. And Riverdale was an opportunity for me to really, to influence also a younger generation of actors and actresses and of, of artists. And, you know, people really care and, or they can, there's a capacity, there's an opportunity to really care about one another and encourage each other and, and to help and, and, I, I do feel that I serve as a mentor or I have served as a mentor and that doesn't make me feel old, no. Cause I'm, at, I'm t you, so you guys, I'm, at, I'm, a, I'm talking to him a little bit in my mind, like in my head too. So he's kind of responding to some of the things I'm asking, <laughs> which I forget that I, I have to make sure I'm getting, I'm getting caught up on the channel here. So um, I'm asking him about being a mentor and if that makes him feel old, I mean, to be honest, cause like I understand because I start, I'm starting to feel old, like I have a, an uh, 18 year old person now, adult in my household. And I'm like, uh, when did I get old? I'm still like, oh, aren't I cool still? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm a mom now, you know? And so, but he's, so he's responding to that and he's saying it's, it's an accomplishment. It's really, it says a lot about, about who you are as a person. If people look up to you for advice or, or they consider you any kind of a mentor, it's a great, it's a great uh, sense of respect and it, it's a great compliment, he says, a great honor, a you know, great compliment. Yeah, yeah. He says, and I, I still got it. He says, I still got it. I'm like, yes, you do, because you are a very good looking man. Even in the afterlife form, you guys, he just mm, very nice. Thank you for taking on your form. He has, I'm um, like, so I can see his face and his hair and his eyes and all that. He just looks a little, um, he's got, um, chiseled features, I would describe it as maybe. And his eyes kind of are, they're not like big and open. They're kind of like a little more mysterious and kind of not squinty, but kind of, you know, they're not like super bright open. And when he smiles, he kind of smiles out of one side of his mouth a little bit. He smiles and then he kind of cocks his smile to the side, his jaw to the side a little bit. He's got a nice chin there. And then he's got like a button up shirt on. It's not a flannel, but it has like that pattern, like a, uh, kind of a plaid. I'm not sure. It's not stripes and it's not checks necessarily, but it's kind of like a, it looks like a flannel shirt, but it's not. It's like a dress shirt. Does that make sense? But it's simple. That's what he has. And he's got jeans on and just like a, it looks like a white or like a light blue shirt, like t-shirt underneath. And I can see that sticking out kind of a thing. And that's it. He looks good. Looks great. After life. All right. Oh, so your death was an unexpected, very unexpected. You had a stroke. I mean, that's crazy. You're very, you seem very young, you know, in your fifties, I think is what you were, what you are when you, when you passed over. But did you have any sense, any idea that you were sick or that you were going to die? I mean, I know that sounds kind of morbid, but did you have any kind of sense of that? He says, not really. He says, not, not, not anything that I would admit to, he says, you know, you don't, you don't think about that. If you, if you're not feeling well, or if you're having headaches, or if you're not, if you're not feeling great, or you're going to the doctor and you're trying to be healthy and, you know, just like if your blood pressure is high or your cholesterol is high, or, he says, you know, you do things to correct that, but not anything that I felt alarmed about. Nothing that I was like really cautious or worried about. Nothing major that I would have, um, he says, nothing that to be alarmed about or anything like that. Hmm. he's talking about having like flu a little bit, like flu-like symptoms, like his stomach kind of feeling upset. And I don't know if he literally legitimately was like sick a couple weeks before he died. I don't know, but he's making me feel like my stomach's upset a little bit. And like kind of how, like sometimes people have flu-like symptoms when they have heart attacks. And so that would be the only potential indicator, but he didn't actually have a heart attack. He had a stroke. So a little bit different, but he's telling me about, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. Now I understand what this message is. Luke Perry is saying it's important to be aware of your health. It's important to recognize the warning signs for things like heart issues or stroke. It can happen to you. Even if like we have had this conversation, even if you feel young and you can't believe that you you know, have a, a, a child that's 18, he says, even if you don't, even if you don't feel like you're old and you associate having a heart attack or high blood pressure or stroke 
with old people, he says, quite frankly, that's what people do. You've got to pay attention to your health. You've got to pay attention to your health. Even if there's no warning signs, even if there's no family history, you've got to pay attention. That's, that's one thing that I think is important that could come out of this. That's good. He, sa he says, this is Luke Perry saying, uh, one thing I think that's important that could come out of this that's good is for people to recognize their health, to, to not, to stay on top of that, you know, to be preventative is important. To be realistic, be realistic and be preventive and just be healthy, as healthy as you can. And some things aren't, aren't, you know, aren't, you can't avoid everything, you can't prevent everything, but it's, it's a good idea to be informed and to take care of yourself as best, as best that you can. He says, as best that you can. And that's not going to stop everything. That's not going to prevent everything, he says. But would it have stopped you and what was going on with you? He says, I, no. He says, no, I, you know, that's something that I can't really answer. Uh, if I had known more about the possibility of strokes or what the symptoms were, would I have recognized it? Probably not because I didn't, that wasn't something that I was even thinking about. I didn't, I'm not, you know, an 80 year old man. I, why would, why would that be something that I would even worry about? So I think it's a perception thing. And that's the, that's the part that can come out of this is to be, to consider your health as a whole and not, not, uh, not put it off as something that's, oh, that happens when you're old, or that only happens to people who smoke, or that only happens to people like this, or that only happens to these kinds of people, or people that do this, or people that do that. That's not the, that's not the case. That's not, all, that's not the case. And he says health is just, health is important. It's just something you got to do. You got to take care of yourself. But as far as prevention, I don't know. He's saying, I don't think what happened to me could be prevented. Not at the time, not at the time it happened. Maybe in the future at some point, there'll be some kind of early warning signs or there'll be campaigns about it, like there's campaigns about heart disease or breast cancer. Maybe there'll be campaigns about stroke and informing people about that. But at the time that it happened to me, no, that wasn't even on anybody's radar. Nobody was even thinking about that, really. All right. Okay. And he's saying he's sending a lot of love to his castmates and his family and his friends, people that were so, he's recognizing that people that were so loving and saying such nice things about him and came out to the hospital, to the memorial, to the, he says the wake, uh, um, to really show their love and appreciation and support for his family. He's saying, thank you. Thank you for supporting my family and my loved ones and my friends who he says obviously had a very hard time with this. He said, I, I put myself in their shoes and if it would have happened to one of them, I, I would have been devastated. It would have really been, been hard for me. And so there's this like, he's saying, thank you. Thank you for respecting my family and, and, and thank you to all of the love, all those who said such kind words and wonderful things. And, and I, I appreciate that. He says, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you for that. He's saying, like, there's a girl, a young woman, I think her name is, it's an S name, like Sophia, Sophie, he's mentioning. I don't know who that is. If you guys know who that is, put in the comments below. Sophie or Sophia, and he's making me see her, like, hug him and stuff. And so I don't know what that's about. And it looks like he's laying down. She's hugging him. So I can see that. I don't think it's Sarah. I think it's Sophie. I think it's S-O-F-I-A, P-H-A. I don't know. I don't know. And then I also see Archangel Michael just steps in right now. So that's beautiful. Thank you very much, Mr. Luke Perry. And thanks for waiting for me to do all my chit chatting because you have been showing up to me for the last week. And that would be the end of June and the early July. This I'm recording this on July 2nd, 2019. So I don't know if you have a birthday or if there's somebody that you love that had a birthday or an anniversary or something at the last week of June, the first week in July. If you know, if you're watching this, go ahead and put that in the comments below if there's a significance, like a birth date, a child's birthday, a significant other, a spouse, a loved one's birthday, his birthday, an anniversary, a marriage, whatever. Last week of July, first week in, or I'm sorry, last week in June, first week in August, or for, last week of June, first week of August, because he's been here for at least 10 days. I can, I've been feeling him a lot. A lot. And then somebody just commented at Above Life Channel on another video 
hey, can you do Luke Perry? And I'm like, yes, he's been around. I've been thinking about him. Great minds think alike, you know? So, so thank you for that. And thank you for giving me the opportunity then, Luke, because connecting with you, I was thinking, well, how long has it been since he died? I'm feeling like it was like May or April or something. I don't know exactly. It wasn't that long ago, but I'm like, it really opened me up. And then after the session that I had with that woman's mom showing up and just recently had died and how easy it was to communicate with her and just really opened me up. And so Luke, I, thank you for being part of that. I, I, I appreciate your help. And I was totally a fan of my Otono and I thought Dylan was awesome, totally awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. And thank you for being here at Above Life Channel. I'm Bridget, it's my pleasure to help to inspire your spirit to fill you up with hope because this, this is your life. Now go live it, just live it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>